What's going on everyone? This is Kevin here, coming at you with Samsung Galaxy A13 5G tips and tricks and hidden features. Now the purpose of this video is to show you how to make the most out of your device, so let's get started. Now the first thing that I want to show you is how to hide apps. Now when you go to the app drawer, you can see all your various apps, whether they're just here or within a folder in the app drawer itself, they're always there. Now, if you do want to hide a certain app, then I'll show you how to do that right now. So when you're in the app drawer, go to the upper right corner and you'll see those three dots. Tap on that, go to settings, and you'll see right here, hide apps. Go there. And now you'll see all your various apps on this list here. So for example, if I wanna hide Duo, then I just select it here in the hidden apps. And I guess while I'm at it, I'll hide the contacts as well. So I'll tap on done. And then now you can see that when you're in the app drawer, there is no duo or contacts apps to be found. So they are in fact hidden here. Now to unhide those, you go to the same area that you did before, go back to hide apps once again, and you'll see there they are. And then you can just uncheck those, tap on done. And now, they'll be back here in the app drawer. Now they won't go back into the folders that they were in before if they were actually in a folder, but they will reappear here on the app drawer itself. So definitely a cool way to kind of clean things up, or if there's a legitimate need to hide a certain app, then you can do that here. Now the next hidden feature that I wanna show you is called edge panels. Now by default, this is not enabled, so you're definitely gonna to wanna to follow along. Now to get edge panels, you're gonna pull down the shade here, Go to the settings in the upper right corner, which is that gear icon. Then go to search and then type in edge. You'll then see edge panels in the search results. So tap there and then tap on edge panels once again and then enable it. And then now with that enabled, you'll see this little edge panel on the side of the display here. So no matter where you are within the operating system or no matter what app you're in, it will always be there. And then all you have to do is just swipe over and you'll see a variety of different things. So you can customize this by putting your favorite apps in this edge panel. You can go to this little pencil in the corner to edit that. So you're able to customize this by adding or removing whichever apps you want. So you can drag those apps in. And then if you want to as well, you can create a folder just by stacking them here. And then now you can see when you go to the edge panel, you'll see not only the apps that you placed here, but then a folder as well. So that's very convenient. You can also view all of your apps very easily here as well. You can even go over to the settings and you can actually do different panels. So instead of having a bunch of apps, you could have your favorite contacts. You could have different smart actions here, other tasks. You could have just the weather show up when you swipe over from the edge panel. There's all kinds of different options. You can also have your clipboard as well. And you can even go to the Galaxy Store to find even more of them. So I definitely recommend trying out this edge panel feature as it's certainly not a gimmick and I can see where this really could come in handy. Another awesome thing too is that if you like to use split screen mode pretty often, then you can actually pin a default split screen into the edge panel. So once you have the split screen set up, which I'll show you how to do that right after this, you just tap on the middle bar there. You'll see on the right side, this little button to add it to the edge screen. You do that. So now, whenever you swipe over from the edge panel, you'll see this preset right here. So you can see it's different from a folder. It's just two apps joined together here. And then if you tap on that configuration, it will pull up the exact split screen mode that you'd want it to be in. And that's especially awesome because split screen is a little bit time consuming to set up. So if you have different defaults set up already, then you literally just swipe over from the edge panel and then you can directly go to that split screen configuration. Now, if you're curious how to even do split screen, all you have to do is just pull up an app of your choosing, go to your recent apps button. From there, hold your finger over the logo of the app and you'll see some different options. So one of them is open in split screen view. So go there and then now you can select what app you want to go on the other half of the split screen. So, I already showed you doing this with YouTube. I'll pick another app here really quickly. I'll just do Reddit. So you can see we have both Reddit here and the regular web browser up top. And then you can also configure the split between the two. So it doesn't have to be 50-50. You can move things around to however you want it to be. And then when you're done with it, just go home, 
and it will get you out of split screen. Now the next thing I want to show you is called pop-up view. Now you can actually use pop-up view with any app that you want to, but essentially you're going to go from the app itself, go to the recent apps button, hold your finger over the logo of the app, and then go to open in pop-up view. And now you can see that you can go wherever you want throughout the operating system, and you have like this mini app here within the actual OS itself. Now you can resize this if you want to. So in this situation for YouTube, you can just resize to just the video size itself, which is pretty nice. And then you can also adjust the transparency as well. So if you want it to be like 25%, you can do that and you can still see what's going on in the background, but at the same time, you can play your video. And then when you're done, tap on the top panel here and then tap on the X to get out of it. Now by default, with the Samsung Galaxy A13 5G, if you double press on the power button, it's actually gonna pull up the camera app, which is super convenient here. And what's also awesome is that if you don't want it to pull up the camera app, you can actually have this set to pull up any app of your liking. So to do this, you're gonna pull down the shade, go to the settings in the upper right corner again, go to search, and you're just gonna type in key, and you'll see this feature right here, it's called side key, tap on that, go to side key once again, and you can see here, quick launch camera is indeed enabled by default if you double press in the power button. But again, if you want to, you can actually customize this to open up any app that you want. So let's say you want a quick access to Twitter, then you can choose Twitter. And then now, no matter where you are within the operating system here, if you double press in the power button, it will pull up that app, which is pretty cool. So that's definitely a convenient way to easily access any app that you want to. Now the next feature that I want to show you is called Dual Messenger. There are a lot of apps out there in various services where they only let you sign in with one account at a time. So Facebook is one of them, where you can't really sign in with multiple Facebook accounts at the same time and easily switch from one to another. Snapchat is also kind of the same way. So Samsung actually gives us a pretty cool workaround with this, and essentially with this feature, it'll install a second copy of that same app so that you can sign in with the other account and have both accounts signed in at the same time. So to do this, you're going to pull down the shade, go to the settings, you're going to type in dual, and you'll see it under advanced features, dual messenger. Go to dual messenger there, and any apps that are compatible with this will show up here, assuming that they're already installed on the device. So you can see here for the apps that I've installed, Snapchat, Facebook, and Messenger are all compatible with this. And essentially, if you enable any of these, it will then install a second copy so that you can then sign in with your other account. This is definitely a really cool feature and something that you absolutely cannot do with any Apple device. Now by default, with the Galaxy A13 5G, we do get the standard Android three button navigation but you can actually customize this if you want to, and I'll show you how to do that right now. So to customize these buttons, you're gonna pull down the shade, go to the settings, go to search, you're gonna type in nav, and you'll see right there, navigation bar, go there, go to navigation bar once again, and we have quite a few options. So the first option is to simply switch around the recent apps in the back button. So if you do that, it does switch those buttons around, so I definitely recommend trying both configurations to see which you prefer, but you do have at least the ability to change that if you want to. And then the other thing you can change too is that if you want to switch from the three button navigation system to swipe gestures instead, you can pretty easily do that here. So just tap on swipe gestures. There's also more options related to that. So you can change up the sensitivity. You can also have it do three different swipe buttons with each swipe based on where you're swiping from, mimicking the recent apps, home, or back buttons. But essentially with the swipe gestures, you swipe up to go home, you swipe partially up to go to the recent apps, and then you swipe from either of the sides to go back. So I definitely recommend trying both gesture-based navigation and the three-button Android navigation to see which you prefer, because maybe you've been using the three-button navigation for a long time, but actually might prefer using the gestures instead or maybe it's the other way around. So I would definitely go over to that, try out the different options, and then just see which one you prefer. But of course, you can easily switch back to the three button Android navigation buttons if you wish. Now with the Samsung Galaxy A13 5G, by default, when you go to the lock screen, you'll see this clock here that has both the time and the date, but you can actually customize this if you want to. 
So let me show you how to do that right now. So you're gonna pull down the shade, go to the gear, go to search, and then type in clock, and you'll see right there, clock style. So go to clock style, and you'll see here that we do have the default already enabled, but there are four other clock designs available. So you can switch it to this configuration, that configuration. You can even have an analog clock if you want to. And in addition to that, you can customize the colors of the text. So there are some options here already. So there's some different gradients available. Or if you want to, you can choose from even more colors to have the exact color that you want for the clock itself. So I switched it over to orange. We'll now go over to the lock screen and you can see it's not only a different clock design, but the font color and the color of the hands on the clock are different. Now with the Samsung Galaxy A13 5G, the battery percentage in the upper right corner is enabled by default, which is pretty awesome, but there are even more battery features that you might want to keep in mind here. So you're going to pull down the shade, go to the settings, you're going to go to search, type in battery, and then you'll go to battery right there, and you'll get some information here about your battery usage, which can be helpful but you can also see this option right here called power saving mode. So if you know that you're gonna be away from a charger for a long time, or if you just wanna get as much battery life out of your phone as possible, then I definitely recommend looking into power saving mode. So essentially, if you switch this on, it will eliminate a bunch of different background tasks so that the device will run as efficiently as possible. So you can see here by switching on power saving mode, we do have limited background network usage, syncing and location checking. It also switches the display's refresh rate from 90 hertz to 60 hertz. And if you want to as well, you don't have to do the full power saving mode. You can also choose other limits with the device, like limiting the CPU speed to 70% or decreasing the brightness by 10%, or you can even limit apps and home screen. So I like that there's so many different customizations and you can pick exactly what you wanna do here so you can get the most battery life possible with your device. The next feature I wanna show you is called one-handed mode. So with the Galaxy A13 5G, we do have a really large display here at 6.5 inches, and it can get difficult to reach certain parts of the phone. So there is this cool feature called one-handed mode. So you're gonna go to the settings, and then you're actually gonna go directly to advanced features right here, and you'll see right there one-handed mode. So one-handed mode will temporarily scale down the display for easier control of your phone with just one hand. So once that's enabled, you'll have two different options for how to enter one-handed mode. You can either use a gesture or you can just double tap on the home button. Now I personally prefer just double tapping on the home button. I feel like that does make things more convenient. But once this is enabled, you can now just double tap on the home button and it will shrink down the display. So you can have the display on the left side of the phone, on the right side of the phone, wherever you want it to be. You can even move it up top here as well. You can also resize it and essentially you get this little mini phone here. So you can do all the normal stuff that you typically do, but this time around, now that the phone is smaller, you can access everything with just one hand. And then to exit this mode, just double tap on the home button, and then you're here back to the normal screen. But this concludes my video on Samsung Galaxy A13 5G tips, tricks, and hidden features. I hope you enjoyed this video and found these various things to be helpful. And hopefully, now that you've watched this video, you have a better understanding of your device. But if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. But this is Kevin here, and I will see you in the next video. Take care and have a great rest of your day. Bye.